This is Selma Schimmel, and you are looking live at the great city of Chicago, which is once again playing host to the American Society of Clinical Oncology, ASCO. This is ASCO's 49th annual meeting, and this year's theme could not be more appropriate, Building Bridges to Conquer Cancer. More than 30,000 of the world's foremost cancer specialists are here, and so is the group room, making our 15th appearance at ASCO and one of our very best. Joining me now is Dr. Mario Lacatur, Associate Member in the Department of Medicine Dermatology Service at Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center in New York City. Hello, Dr. Lacatur. Thank you so much for having me. What actually causes this hand-foot syndrome? Hand-foot syndrome can be caused by numerous agents, most notably anthracyclines like doxorubicin, taxanes, and anti-metabolites like fluorouracil or capecitabine, and some of the newly introduced VEGFR inhibitors such as sorafenib, sunitinib, and the recently approved drug for colorectal cancer, regorafenib. With most agents, what appears to occur is that there is an, um, a blockade of the normal growth or reparative capability of the skin in the palms and soles, which is subject on a daily basis to subclinical trauma from walking, opening the door, or using your hands. When people are on these medications, their ability to repair this subclinical damage is impaired, thereby causing these very painful blisters and swelling of the hands and feet. And the peeling of the skin sometimes associated with these drugs and the rashes, why does that happen? Well, that's a good question, and we do know the reason as to why it happens with certain agents such as the epidermal growth factor receptor inhibitors. The acneiform rash that occurs in 70 to 90 percent of patients treated with these drugs, such as erlotinib, cetuximab, or penetumumab, is a direct consequence of the inhibition of this receptor in the uh, hair follicles, in the face, chest, and scalp. With other agents, such as taxanes or doxorubicin, we don't know exactly what uh, is causing the rash. What we do know is that there appears to be a necrosis or a direct damage of these chemotherapeutic agents on the skin, similarly to what is perhaps occurring in the tumor. The skin beyond rash, when you see skin literally peel off, what, what mechanism causes that? So that is a good question, and in, mo in most cases, uh, people confuse this with very dry skin, but in fact this is not dry skin. I would say the best analogy is once after you have had a sunburn and your skin peels off and what it is is in effect the chemotherapeutic drug is killing your skin and your skin then undergoes its normal process of growth and uh, loss and it is shed into the environment. Keep in mind that every 28 days you uh, lose a completely and make a completely new layer of skin and that you are constantly shedding skin into the environment. And you may notice that in your own home. You may notice that how, how come sometimes your windows are closed and you see everything uh, gets so dusty. Well, it's really not dust. It's the skin that you have been shedding in your home. Most people, when you say rash, what they visualize are raised um, bump, bumps on the skin or, or you know, you can s see it and you can, you can feel it. But patients on doxorubicin as an example, there's a different kind of a rash that patients could see. It almost looks like a red flushing or it, they're not necessarily raised, but it's a different kind of rash. Could you explain to us this little, these differences, these nuances of rashes? Yes, and in fact, I, I presented this for the advanced uh, providers meeting in, on Friday here in ASCO, uh, which is that all rashes are not created equal. And uh, the acnea from rash to EGFR inhibitors that occurs on the face and chest, it is characterized by mostly itching. The maculopapular or morbilliform rash that occurs with antibiotics, anti-inflammatory medications, the newly approved drug vimurafenib or zelbaraf, for example, is characterized by mostly redness in these oval-shaped areas on the trunk, the chest and back, and then spreads out through the body in a centripetal fashion. Whereas with doxorubicin, especially pegylated doxorubicin, what we see is more of an intertriginous rash, in other words, affecting the body folds. And this rash is usually characterized by these very painful red areas in the armpits, under the breasts, 
in the abdominal area where you have your, your belt or in between the thighs. And this rash is very painful. Uh, the skin basically desquamates. I think that the drug is in effect uh, killing the skin and the skin is just peeling off. And anytime you have open areas of skin, uh, that area is very likely to become secondarily infected. So what happens is that many, many people that receive pegylated doxorubicin or doxel, they have the rash and what is causing most of the symptoms is not the rash per se, but an infection that resulted from the rash. And what you do is such a great contribution to patients' quality of life. And I really thank you. It's been a pleasure talking with you. Thank you so much for having me. Sir. Dr. Mario Lacatur, Associate Member in the Department of Medicine, Dermatology Service at Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center in New York City. Thank you, Dr. Lacatur. Thank you.